to guess the average draft position without going over, and this is the CBS Sports average draft position, so they have to be closest to the ADP without going over the number. You guys all seen prices, right? This is a very similar type of game. And once the player, once they get the player right, they can give analysis on that player, but they're not really cared about giving you analysis. They're cared about beating each other and who's gonna win this game. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Quarterback number one. Wait, 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 wait. he's gotta close his laptop. No cheating. My hands are gonna be right here. You're gonna see that I won't <laughs> cheat either. We're playing this honestly. <laughs> okay, all right. Quarterback number one, his name is Kyler Murray. As the champion from a year ago, you get to go first. I'm the champion from a year ago. He did win. Dave, as the champion from a year ago, you get to go first. I just, you know, you usually beat Heath, uh, Pete in all the other games. So. Yeah, right, right. Uh, Kyler Murray is going to be a popular pick. I'm going to say that he's a fifth round pick. I'm going to put him at 56. I'm going to, I'm going to go with 50, 50. <laughs> Okay, we're off to a great start. All right, 50 is the answer for you. You are the closest without going over, uh, as we showed it on the screen before Heath gave his answer. All right, uh, so Heath, you're up <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> there? 1-0. Uh, right. um, yeah, I, like You're the this, defending champ. We've got to give him an This, <laughs> this just yeah, goes this to show. This is a one for everybody. Because I think he's going about where we all have drafted as a quarterback. Everybody's pushed up just a little bit. This is not too far, though. Like, I'm much closer to Kyler Murray at 51 overall than I am Josh Allen at 9. So the, the longer you wait, the closer ADP gets to where we have them ranked. We, as a group, have the four quarterbacks locked in of Allen, Herbert, Mahomes, Jackson, whatever order. Yep. Those are the four guys locked in. Five could be Murray, could be Hurts, could be Brady. I think a lot of us all over the, over the place with that, but a lot of people like Kyler Murray as a fifth quarterback. So... 51.42 is his current ADP. All right, we're going to wait to show the ADP on the next guy until we give our guesses here. Uh, but the next quarterback that we're looking at here is Kirk Cousins. So as the uh, leader in the clubhouse so far, Kirk Cousins' ADP is? I don't think anybody's getting too excited about drafting Kirk Cousins, so I'm going to go with pick 108. 108 is the guess for Heath. Dave, for you? I, I can't help but think with the way that people tend to draft quarterbacks that it's going to be sooner than 108. So I will say 80. 80 is the ADP for you, and you are the winner. The ADP for Kirk Cousins, you're a little bit off, but you did go low, 99.15. So Cousins, as we've talked a lot about, could be the best bargain on draft day. You heard our guys yesterday, Brian McFadden and Pete Frisco, who are in Minnesota. You can get reports on them from our other shows here on CBS Sports HQ. Cousins is locked in as what could be maybe his best season yet. So, Dave, is he just going to be the quarterback that you should wait for if you are that type of fantasy manager, just wait out the position? Uh, he's one of them. There's also Aaron Rodgers. There's also Derek Carr. Trey Lance, I don't think you're going to be able to get that with anymore. But how about the idea of getting Trey Lance and Kirk Cousins? And you'll actually draft Lance first. He's good to go right around pick 100 in most drafts. And that's, just, that's where you're getting Kirk Cousins. You can almost draft them back to back. You'll start Lance in week one against Chicago, week two against Seattle, flip to Kirk Cousins. I believe he plays the Lions in week three. He does. I would tell you for sure, but I'm keeping my hands here. Uh, I, I think Cousins has immense upside this year. He does, and you know Justin Jefferson could be the number one receiver. If Adam Thielen stays healthy, he mm -hmm. could be in the conversation to lead wide receivers in touchdowns. Irv Smith, K.J. Osborne, a lot of things to like about Cousins. But uh, don't take him at 80. Take him at 99.15. Let's go right. to the running backs right. now here. That was so, a strategy for this game. All right. Well, I you don't have to do that. You, you, you got you to be at least in the range. We're going we're gonna to maybe have to amend the rules after this, that you can't go too early on some of these guys, especially as we start to get into these positions. So you can't say pick one and still get away with it. All right, let's go now to Brees Hall, the running back that we're looking at here. Did not exactly, I think, excite fantasy managers after playing in the preseason game against the Falcons with the backups while Michael Carter was rested. But in any event, Dave, what's the ADP for Brees Hall? I'm going to say 47. I'm taking him earlier than that. I think he's going to be good rest of uh, for the most of the season, I should say. I think he's the most talented back the Jets have. I think he's going to go in that round four range. I, I was going to say round four as well. It does not make a lot of sense for me to say what my guess was going to be, which was 45. So I will... Uh... I'm going to go a little bit earlier. I will go 39. 39, okay. So either one would have sufficed because uh, Dave would, would have got it. He's the closest. It's 48.3. Mm. So you were, uh, you were not going to win this one unless you said 48. So 48, point, 48 on the dot is, uh, is the ADP for 
Brees Hall. So, Dave, you take a 2-1 lead here. We know that the one for Heath was a little questionable. So uh, Yeah, it's a 2-0 lead, Jamie. Come on. <laughs> uh, Brees Hall, should he still go in round four based on what we saw last night? Yeah, I'm not. Don't. I think we're kind of going overboard with how we're viewing running backs in the preseason. And this one doesn't play. Oh, that must mean he's the starter. This one does play. Oh, that means he's in the doghouse. And and to me, Brees Hall didn't look good in the second preseason game, but he was playing with second string offensive linemen and with the third string quarterback. I'm giving him a pass on that. I think he's going to end up making a bunch of plays. And I think he's the better running back for the Jets than Michael Carter. Yeah, I just hope that this offensive line not being good could be a problem, that Joe Flacco maybe starting who knows how many games could be a benefit, could be a you know, problem as well. Zach Wilson, what's his health going to be? So I'm getting a little cold feet on Brees Hall, but I, I hope that it's mostly because uh, we're not going to see too much Michael Carter also. That could be a problem uh, to keep in mind. All right, next running back that we're talking about here is Chase Edmonds, who, uh, again, played a lot in the first in the second preseason game for the Dolphins as they uh, took on the Raiders. Uh, did a nice job catching the ball in the backfield, but only three carries for three yards. And so, uh, Dave, you got the 2-1 lead. So, Chase Edmonds, what is his ADP? Oh, I get to guess the ADP again. This is cool. I, I, I think we're taking him a little earlier than the general public. I think the general public is a little late to the party on Chase Edmonds. And certainly a non and half PPR leagues is not going to go as high as full PPR. I'm going to put him in the late round seven range. I'm going to say 79. I'll go with 80. <laughs> Our strategy coming into play here, and strategy pays off. His ADP is actually 96.6, so going even later Ooh. than what you thought, Dave. Ah. And this is going to be, I think, when we look at the next uh, – you know, version of our ADP, and we check on who are the biggest risers. I think he's going to be one of the biggest risers because I do think that we are going to see him. You know, probably jump maybe two rounds uh, if he does have the lead role for the Dolphins. Do you agree on that? Keith? Oh, he absolutely should. I, I, I think there's an argument for him to be made as a top 24 running back right now. He seems Agreed. to clearly be the lead back for the Dolphins, and that won't mean all the running work, but it's going to mean more than he's had for most of his career. All right, the score. Unofficially, it's two to two. Well, officially, it's two to two. Officially, unofficially, uh, you guys can say it's two to one. It's, it's uh, unofficially two to two. All right, this is going to be the tiebreaker for today. So we're going with our wide receiver here, the one wide receiver we're going to highlight. And Heath, you're up. Okay. Chargers wide receiver, Keenan Allen. Ooh, this is a. Uh, he always goes a little bit later than he should. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit further back. I will say he is going at pick thirty nine. Pick thirty nine for you. Dave? I'm thinking the other way. I think that people are, are kind of excited about him. Mm, do I really think that? Yeah, I do. I'm going to say he's closer to 30. 30 for you, 39 for you. The winner, officially, is Dave Richard. The ADP is 36.9. So we do wow. have him going right on the it's tipping amazing. point of I think the 3 four turn. Closer on every player but one. You were closer, but uh, Dave Dave went lower. So, but uh, you went over. Uh, and that's the rules of ADP Price is Right. you got to be under the number. So, Dave, uh, when you look at Keenan Allen, should people be taking him where he is, or maybe should he go a little bit sooner, like you said, 30th overall? I, it, I think it depends on format, and that goes without saying. He's one of those guys that truly benefits from being in full PPR because he gets the targets, he gets the catches. He doesn't necessarily get a ton of yards and touchdowns, although there's always the chance that that changes because this Chargers offense continues to evolve, and Keenan Allen's going to be a huge part of it. I think he's one of the safest wide receivers you can take. Uh, he doesn't have the same type of upside as a Tyreek Hill, as a Debo Samuel. But he's going to be picked in that same range because of the stability that he's given fantasy managers for years and years. And it would not surprise me in the least if he finished 2022 as a top 12 fantasy receiver in full PPR. Also wouldn't be surprising, though, if this is the year that Mike Williams passes him, if he stays healthy and scores more touchdowns, because I think he will get a lot of more red zone opportunities, as we saw last year. Mike Williams just not converting a lot of those. Hopefully that changes for those of you drafting Mike Williams. All right, there's our first version of ADP Prices Right. We'll iron out the kinks for next week's version of it, and we'll see how things go. But Dave winning the first one 